This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, we're going to play with a little bit of high voltage from the form of a ZVS driver. So this is a ZVS driver. Zero volt switching. And I have it connected to an old television flyback transformer, which, as you see, allows me to produce arcs well over an inch long. And that's with a 12 volt input. So how does it work? Well, let's uh, disconnect this so nothing bad happens, and then we'll talk about it. So right here is the very basic circuit of a uh, ZVS driver, which stands for zero voltage switching. Why is that important? Here, I'll put this back up here so you guys can kind of reference it as we're talking about this. Well, it's important because... Oops, oh, shoot. Got a line. <laughs> Sorry about that. Had to redraw it. I had my ground in the wrong place. So what is the reason for the zero voltage switching? Well, it's because this circuit relies on two MOSFETs oscillating. And MOSFETs do not like to be switched when there is a voltage across it. So the ZVS driver, and this is a very basic circuit. I mean, if you look here, you're going to see uh, some diodes, resistors, all sorts of stuff going on. And we'll talk about where we get there in a minute. But for now, I just need you to understand this <clears throat> basic circuit. So let's call this, um, this is Q1. This is Q2. And uh, we'll call this, this point right here point Y. And we'll call this point down here point Z. So we have a reference point. So when power is applied at V+, plus, Current starts to flow through both sides of the primary and onto the MOSFET's drains. Okay. Simultaneously, the voltage that appears at both of the MOSFET's gates, right here, coming from here, it starts to turn them off. Or I'm sorry, it starts to turn them on. And because we're again relying on no two components being exactly the same, one of them will start oscillating before the other one. Now, there's an extra bit of current that's flowing on the primary, and that is going to grab the gate. Like, like so let's say uh, Q1 turns on first. Well, that extra bit of current in the primary is going to shut off Q2. Does that make any sense? It's basically going to rob the current from it. And what's going to happen is that's going to form an LC tank circuit, with the primary and the voltage will rise and fall sinusoidally. And that makes these circuits really great for driving high frequency transformers, which is what we're going to use. So let's imagine that Q1 was the first to turn on. The voltage here at point Y will be near ground while the voltage at Z rises to a peak and back down as the LC tank goes through one half of a cycle. As the voltage at Z passes through zero, the gate current at Q1 is removed and the MOSFET turns off. The voltage at point Y now is allowed to start rising and Q2 turns on. The, the opposite of this is what ends up happening if Q2 were the first one to go on. Now, in order to present the, prevent the oscillator from drawing a huge peak and, you know, going boom, L1, that's this guy right here, forgot to label it, very sorry. L1, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, all L1 is doing is acting as a choke. It's blocking um, current spikes. Now, you notice, like I said, this means the MOSFETs switch when there's no volts across them, zero volt. <coughs> this is good because it allows them to switch when they are carrying the least amount of power. And, <coughs> pardon me again, <coughs> as you know, in electronics, 
power is equal to heat. And heat is the enemy of electronics. But because this is so efficient at switching with zero voltage, a very little heat sink is needed. In this case, the two MOSFETs are under this fan and heat sink, and that's all that it really needs. Another name for this circuit is called a Royer oscillator. Not important, but I just figured I'd tell it with you. And if you want to know how to find the frequency of your circuit, it is 1 over... Now, you guys have been watching this for a long time. You've got to know what the, the first argument this is going to be, right? 2 pi. We're always doing the 2 pi at the beginning. So, it is 2 pi times the square root... Now everybody just rolled their eyes up in their head and they left. Don't worry, it don't get much harder than this. The square root of L times C. And that will give you your frequency. It's pretty simple. Well, it's not pretty simple. It, it's a little bit involved, but it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. Now, let's talk about some of the extra things that are on here and what they're used for. <clears throat> All right, so when we look here, we see a few different things. And um, one of the reasons for these other components, again, it goes back to these MOSFETs. Uh, what can happen is if the gates get more than 30 volts away from the source, your MOSFETs can and will go boom. So we need to prevent that from happening. And we could do that with some resistors. Um, we can use like 10K resistors just, you know, to pull the gates down to ground to prevent latch up. That's what um, latch up is the term used to describe when the MOSFET gets stuck in the on position. Now, we also have Zener diodes. You can see right there, Zener diodes marked uh, 12 volts. Those Zeners prevent the gate from exceeding 12 volts. And then we have some more um, diodes down here. You can see one there and one in there. And the purpose of those diodes is to pull the gates down to ground when the voltage on the opposite side of the tank is at ground. Now, you may notice that instead of charging the gates with the LC tank, we are using the V-plus here to charge up the gate. See that? V-plus comes in, energizes. Oop, oop. This improves the overall uh, design of the circuit. So, um, why am I playing with this EVS driver? I like play with high voltage. And uh, it's an upgrade from a solid-state uh, Tesla coil type driver. So this would this will work a little differently, and I'll have something on that coming here pretty soon. So we can all we need to do to run this thing is bring in 12 volts to the input side. And that is going to start our oscillation when I power it up. Again, here is uh, L1. And you see here we have three output terminals. Let me get you a better look. Three output terminals. Um, the center one is your center tap, considered ground. And then these two are the opposite end. Now I have this ZVS hooked up to a flyback transformer. And you can see we have four turns of primary on either side of the center tap here. It's very important that they are both put in the same direction. If you wind these in opposite directions, it will not oscillate. Um, you know, I got little sticks here I'm using just to keep my hands away. Because this is a, a lot of voltage. I'll tell you what we'll do here. Let's, uh, let's see if I can't swing you around this way. You gonna stay? All right. 
This way you can see what, what kind of input power it's getting. I'll energize it. Now you can see it's pulling 0.3 amps. There's no arc. I'm going to create a small arc now. That's about a 2 millimeter arc. We'll draw it away. It's about a half inch. What's that? 12 and a half millimeters. There's about 25 millimeters. That's about as far as I can go. Boop. Just like that. So you can see the input power remains locked at 12 volts. But, you know, we're arcing here. 25 millimeters. That's... So the rule of thumb in uh, air breakdown is a thousand volts a kilovolt per millimeter I don't know. i'm trying to think of a way i could show you this maybe hold this back here no that's not a good idea but i mean that is truly about an inch which is 25.24 millimeters so that's 25,000 volts there, 25 kilovolts. Look at that, it melted through the ground wire, melted my Kapton tape. High voltage can be fun to play with, but please make sure you know what you're doing. Um, I accept no responsibility or, you know, if you build anything you see here in this video, you hold me harmless of anything that happens to you on the back end. I'm simply entertaining you here with my high voltage shenanigans. I am not instructing you to do this. I am not encouraging you to do this. You do so at your own risk. So there you have it. The ZVS driver, zero voltage switching driver, also known as a Royer oscillator, able to take 12 volts input at five amps and produce 25 kilovolts on the output. Very efficient, very little loss no heat at all. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons, and a big thanks to Solder Stick. Now a little bit more about them. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.